We're about to log in to the free PBX web interface for the first time and set up our first phone. Uh, before we do that, those of you with PBX ES accounts, you're going to have to log into your account. Um, and on the left side here, go to Trunks and GTalk. And we have to get rid of this um, Google information. So whatever your username and stuff was, just type anything random and type password just random and hit Submit Changes. That will... Uh, disconnect your PBXES account from Google Voice. Therefore, you're not going to have any troubles there. You, you shouldn't have to change anything else on PBXES. Um, if you want to remove your personal information or whatever, that's going to get your account deleted. If you want to do that, that's fine. If you want to save it and use it as a backup for some other Google Voice phone number in the future, that's fine too. But you, at least um, for the time being, you have to get rid of your Google Voice information out of PBXES if you have PBXES. If you don't, let's continue to the web interface. To do that, you go to 192.168.1.125 or whatever your internal IP address is. We're going to go to the bottom left here, and from users, we're going to slide this over to admin and hit free PBX administration. Now, the login is main, and your password was the second password we set up during the PBX in a flash installation in VirtualBox. Now this is what the initial screen is going to look like. No phones online, one trunk by default, which I think is Skype. Now the first change here we're going to do is go to settings, asterisk, SIP settings. Um, NAT is going to be set to yes, as long as you have a NAT router. Um, we're going to hit auto configure. So it's going to show your external IP address right now, but we're actually going to change that. We're not going to hit dynamic IP. Unintuitively, dynamic IP doesn't work, at least for me. I had to hit static IP. Usually dynamic IP here, you would put your um, dynamic DNS address here, the one you set up on uh, afraid.org. But like I said, unintuitively, it only works on static IP, at least for me. So when you type in your information here, this is going to be set up, because if this isn't set up right, you're going to be unable to make phone calls. So the local no networks is right for me, since my IP is 192.168.1.125. Uh, you want this as the dot zero. So if yours is 10.10.10.5, this would be 10.10.10.0. So it's always going to have a zero at the end of this one right here. Leave that default. So let's say it was um, pbx.moo.com as your dynamic DNS server. Uh, that's what you would put right there. That's important. Now, Codex, this is what your server is going to support. ULaw, now keep this in mind, ULaw is the same as G711. That is the typical phone line quality. It's lossless. And it's 8 kilohertz. Uh, it's what Google Voice uses. So that means if you're making a call over Google Voice, you can't use anything higher quality than that. For example, G722. You can set it on your phone, and you can set it in here to G722, but you won't get 16 kilohertz quality because ULaw is the max that Google Voice is. So um, we want to have access to ULaw. I don't use this one, ULaw or whatever. Uh, I don't use GSM. I support uh, EULA, G722, uh, G729. We'll get into that later and how to set it up. Some people like G729 because it is low bandwidth and high compression. So there's a whole, there's a whole bunch of information and websites you can use to uh, find out about codecs. Um, if, you, if you're on Wi-Fi and you have a fast internet connection, you want to either use G722 or EULA. I use G722 all the time, uh, but like I said, ULA is about, I think, 40 to 60 kilobytes per second bandwidth while you're making a phone call with somebody. Uh, G722 is considered HD voice. You won't get HD voice if you're going through Google Voice, but if you're going, you know, if you have a girlfriend set up on this asterisk server as well and you call her directly um, using her extension instead of her phone number, then you'll both get G722 quality. So that's how that works. So you can support all these all you want, but I heard word on the street is that the more you support, the more power your computer uses, the more um, bogged down it gets. I don't know if that's true. I just use the codecs I want to use, which is usually those three. And yeah, that's it. Um, scroll down here. We don't want video support. Everything else is um, default. And everything else looks great. So you would hit Submit Changes, and then you hit Apply Config. And we'll uh, start on the next section next. I wanted to make a comment on this page here. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see an option called 
allow anonymous inbound SIP calls. Now, if you had an account at PBX ES and your login name on the website was Phil, your address would be phil at pbxes.org. But to actually log into the extension from your phone and make phone calls, it would be phil-200. Now, the nice thing about running your own free PBX server is when we set up the first extension, it's going to be 201. That means if phil at pbxes.org enters 201 at pbx.moo.com on his phone, when you have a lo allow anonymous SIP guest enabled, he will be able to call you directly and it will bypass Google Voice entirely. You won't even need a phone number to do this. Since he's using PBXES, it won't be G722 HD quality unless he too runs his own free PBX server. Every tutorial, tutorial I've read online though suggests that you keep anonymous SIP guests off. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to leave it off. I know there's a way to accept uh, SIP calls without this anonymous option, but I'm not sure how to do it yet. All right, the first thing we're going to do is set up an extension. This is your actual phone now. And it could be uh, an Android device. It could be an actual VOIP phone in your house. Um, we're going to give an extension. So we go to Applications in um, Free PBX here. Scroll down to Extensions. You're going to see one's already added here by default, 701. Leave that alone. We're just going to do Generic SIP Device, Default, Submit. So let's start out with the extension as 201, ext whatever your name is, extension name uh, or display name, CID uh, num alias, and that's caller ID. So um, here you're actually going to put your 10-digit Google Voice phone number. And as an example, we're going to do 763-555-1010. And that's going to be the example from now on. Anytime I put that number in, that's where you should put your Google Voice number. So SIP alias, same thing, your name. Outbound caller ID, we're going to put that as the same as your um, Google Voice phone number. We're going to be typing that in a lot. Um, scroll down here. So secret, uh, we're going to be changing this. This is the actual password that you put in your phone. So when you go to register and you add an account here, this is what you're going to do. Your username is going to be 201 and your password is going to be whatever you put here. And you can change that anytime you want. Um, have it good enough. So we're going to do just like Pith Helmet 8686. Nobody will guess that one. And then um, scroll down and you want to disable voicemail. I think it's off by default. Yeah, voicemail. We don't want voicemail on here. We're going to use Google Voicemail. And then hit Submit. And you're actually going to have to hit Apply and then you're going to have to go back in there. So let's choose Dan 201 on the right. The extensions there shows up on the right side now. And now we're going to have a little bit more options here after we've created it. Um, so you scroll down a little bit. You go down to port. Make sure it's 5060. Qualify. Now this is important. This is the thing I event eventually found out. Typically it's on yes. On um, other PBX servers it's on yes. This is the like the how frequent your phone will or your server will ping the phone, or the extension, to make sure it's still alive. And if it doesn't get a reply, it'll basically not accept calls anymore. So after some research, I found out you can set this to no. And so your phone isn't constantly pinging all the time, so you can't get disconnected from the server, and you'll always be able to receive calls. Um, your situation might be different. Mine is that way right now. I have no idea why. And uh, for whatever reason, it works out better. It, it doesn't uh, ping as much. It doesn't use your Wi-Fi connection. doesn't use your 3G or 4G connection as much. And um, I still get the calls in. But this is something you might want to tinker with. Uh, put it, it, this as default. And if you have problems receiving phone calls um, after a while. On PBX, yes, for me and my girlfriend, it was about th every 30 minutes that I didn't use the phone, it just dropped out it, because it didn't re-register. And I would, I would not be able to receive phone calls because of this right here, this qualify option. So set that to no. And everything else looks good. UDP, that's what we're using. Everything else on default looks good. I don't think you have to change anything else. Recording options, uh, I don't record on this, so. And that's it, submit, apply again.